Good evening, lady and gentleman. The only two people who are listening to this program right now. Uh, you are listening to Doc and Lefty on Webcast One Live Internet Radio, the finest in Des Moines. My name is Blake Labinus. I am the uh, your your Lefty host, and the doctor this evening is out. Uh, the good doctor Patrick Bertroche is out. He's uh, attending some sort of Republican fundraiser, some dinner. <laughs> um, that I found out about yesterday, although he's known about for some time. It's just like the doctor kind of do that to me. But anyway, because I have complete control over the show this evening, the doc said I could do whatever I want. And as an equal partner and uh, co-host of this lovely program, I decided to take full uh, authority and do something that is is uh, as close to my heart as my rib cage, and that is to talk to local musicians who I've known for a long time and uh, kind of talk to them, pick their brains a little bit about their process, talk about the songs they like to play, uh, talk about the scene here in Des Moines. And I am joined in studio by two very good friends of mine. Uh, we have uh, Bradley Seidenfeld, a uh, local Des Moines legend. There's Brad right there. He's a good-looking guy. And on uh, my other hand, we have my good friend Brian Baker, who's a uh, local Des Moines talent. And uh, and guys, thank you very much for coming in. Um Thank you really, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's this was a the very uh, definition of last minute. And what I wanted <laughs> to take a uh, and so I really appreciate these guys for uh, for coming in. And in a probably fifteen to twenty minutes or so, a very special guest and a very good friend of mine will be um, hopefully calling in if he can get his cell phone to work. So at least he told me that he would be able to do that. Um, basically, what I want the show to be about tonight is sort of. Acoustic singer songwriter music. It's something that I I personally enjoy. It's something that I personally perform around town, and uh, to accomplish that, we have these uh, two great musicians here in the studio, and I would uh, just kind of like to talk to them a little bit about what they do, what they like, and have them each play a song for you guys, and hopefully you enjoy it as much as I enjoy listening to them. So I'm going to start with you, Mr. Seinfeld. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. Good. I'm glad to hear it. So. Um, you, uh, how long have you been playing uh, around around town? Uh, I think I've been playing here for twelve years. Twelve years. Yeah. Now you're from Des Moines originally, correct? I am, yeah. And um, and so you are, you're really familiar. Where, uh, what's your uh, your favorite places to play? Um, I probably prefer the Ducktail Lounge in the Ducktail Lounge. Yeah, Ab- abso- absolutely. I'm uh, familiar with that place. If you haven't been to the Ducktail Lounge in Clive, it's fantastic. Uh, the owner Jamie's a personal friend of both Brad and I. Um, do you know Jamie Bryan? A little no. bit. The owner, owner of Ducktail, he's a he's a great guy. But anyway, um, so, and now you, uh, now you have your own, you run your own, uh, your business. If I remember correctly, and I so do. Yeah. How? I mean, it, that's a great thing to do. It's, it makes it really easy to play. But yeah. How does the day and the night kind of con- conflict and contrast sometimes? Um. Well, I'd say because my other work is seasonal, and and my playing tends to be seasonal as well. Like I play a lot more during the summer, and my other work, which is production video stuff is is more um a lot more prevalent during the summer um it gets a little tricky but um i do a lot of like sunday patio things and then i'll shoot during the week or saturday night you know like nobody's really shooting at you know 10 o'clock on a saturday night where you know when i can be out till two playing so um it's just scheduling and making sure the iphone is always up to date and uh kind of going from there fantastic now um is is the summer sort of like do you like do you prefer the outdoor prefer the outdoor gigs um, more so than the indoor ones? Um, I if it's not too hot, I guess. <laughs> did you play the I'm Saints gig this, this last summer? What's that? Did you play the Saints gig this last summer? I did. Yeah. That oh was my gosh. Ridiculous. It was brutal. That it was, was it was fun, but it was it was. I think I think I had like a speaker off at one point. Like my the only speaker that was on was the one on the ground that's faced towards me, my monitor speaker and. And the one, you know, that was facing the crowd was off and people were just hearing like a muffled version and nobody really, <laughs> nobody really like, you know, could tell the difference anyway, which is, which is not a good thing. But, and then, then that one back, went back on and the other speaker like overheat, they're just overheating and, yeah. and I couldn't drink enough water. So yeah, I mean, the outdoor gigs are fun, but, but it's hard on your equipment and, and your voice. And for everything. sure. Now, before I, uh, before we kick off into your, uh, the song you're going to do for us, um, I, uh. Just got to ask, like, sort of, who are some of your, a couple of your influences? Like, some of the biggest guys in playing guitar vocally, uh, songwriting wise. Um, shucks. Uh, I I really like David Gray a lot. Yeah. David Gray. Um, as I've gotten a little bit older, um, I 
I really, yeah, I mean, as far as like writing, I'll just listen to his music and then like kind of copy it basically. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I, I'm a huge John, sucker for John Mayer. I mean, yeah. and, and I don't know if I am influenced by him because he's just way too wicked good for me to to copy it all. But I've I've really I love the sentiment in his music, even though he likes to pretend like he's too cool for it. He's he's pretty sentimental guy, and I like that a lot. Um, otherwise, probably Eminem. You know, for sure, absolutely. Now we're going to uh, what song are you going to play for us? By the way, uh, I'll play I'll play like a ballad first, awesome. so that since I haven't heard myself play over this yet, and <laughs> right. I won't mess up that way. He, Brad Seidenfeld playing it safe. We're going to take a quick uh, one minute break. We'll let Brad get prepared here, and then we'll be back with uh, some live music here on Doc and Lefty Webcast One Live. Stay tuned. Nice. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. All right, welcome back. This is Lefty with Doc and Lefty sitting in the captain's chair on this Tuesday. We are without the doctor, but we will persevere and uh, keep calm and carry on. I'm sitting here with uh, two local musicians, uh, Brad Seidenfeld and Brian Baker. And Brad is just about to uh, play a tune for us live on air, and he would like to uh, take a chance to talk to you all about that song. All right, so I'll start off. Uh, I'll I'll play a ballad that I wrote maybe uh, a year ago. I've really kind of simplified everything I've been doing, so... Um, this one's called My Minnesota, and uh, I used to live up there in the north and, and have a, a lady up there, so this is kind of a love-type ballad or whatever. So here goes. With your gorgeous red hair Ooh, that's you And that's you You're not perfect, I see But you're perfect to me Yeah, that's true Girl, when you walk I go walking along On the reasons to write you this song. It's sunshine, we don't get it around on this frozen white ground that we live. And I'm warm when you're sleeping beside, when I open my eyes and you're there. Girl, when you wake, I'll be waking up too I'd be crazy to waste one more minute with you Yeah, with you Cause you're mine Yeah, you're mine My Minnesota
Now I see past your beautifulness and the way that you kiss. Yeah, I see it's something only music can play. That these words only say when I see. Girl, when you're near, I can sing it in tune. And all of my midnights, they shine just like noon. Yeah, they shine, oh yeah, they shine. Girl, when you wake, I'll be waking up too. I'd be crazy to waste one more minute with you, yeah, with you, yeah, you're my, yeah, you're my, my Minnesota. There's been spaces, traces, and places, states from before. Now you're mine Oh, you're my My Minnesota From now on Let's take old Minnesota From now on Let's take old Minnesota Wherever we go Brad Seidenfeld with My Minnesota. That was really good, man. Thanks. Very nice. That was fantastic. Now, I uh, I could really definitely t- hear the the mayor sentimental influence yeah. for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, gonna, I'm sappy. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> I got to ask you though. Proud. Um, uh, hey, you know, don't uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We all have. Uh, that's what. That's why we play music in the first place. Yeah, yeah. You know, but. Uh, I wanted to ask you because I noticed something in in Mayer's in the way Mayer does write songs um is that he uh um it's not, he has a lot of place and a lot of like you know uh, static places like Why Georgia and and uh, a couple of different songs mm-hmm. that in that nature that seem to kind of stabilize him a little bit in his really crazy life now without getting too much into your process at this point I was wondering if it, does that kind of come through is that something you ever thought about or um, this, this is the first time that I've kind of mixed, uh, a time and place in like, you know, actually working the place in, into the song. I, I think, uh, I think with that one, it was, it was the specific reason I was there. You know, I'd move there, you know, against my first rule of, you know, for somebody to be with somebody. And, and that was, it, that was the whole reason. So that was kind of the meaning there. I, I, I do love that idea of like, you know, having a place, you know, and one of my other favorite artists, Mike Doty, who used to be the soul coughing lead singer, talks a lot about incorporating like places, you know, like geographical places and songs. I think I think when you do that, it gives it it paints an even like more vivid picture for your audience. Um, not that that's just I wasn't doing it just for the audience, but um, they they picture snow and they picture, you know, like people with blonde hair. So I don't know what you picture when you think of <laughs> Minneapolis, but, um, and then, and then like it, it, it just, it creates, I, I don't, I don't know what it is. I think it creates this just kind of rustic feel, you know, I, the samples used to have the song called, uh, Indiana, um, that right. I just love because he's talking about driving through Indiana, you know, like, I just love that. And I, I don't even care for Indiana really as a state. That much, I, but. I would, I would tend to agree. I hope that you're not a Hoosier, Brian, because no. I I've been to Indiana several times and I'm not a fan. Well, anyway, we're going to take another, uh, we're going to take another quick, uh, one minute, another one minute break. Um, and then we'll get to, uh, Brian and it looks like our mystery caller has chimed in. And so I'll definitely want to talk to him during the break. This is a uh, lefty with doc and lefty. That was Brad Seidenfeld playing my Minnesota Webcast One Live. Thanks for listening. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little 
until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. It's like they want to get hit. Need a body shop? All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is Lefty, your uh, lovable liberal uh, co-host of the Doc and Lefty Show. Um, a few fist pumps because I know I know that I know that these two guys that are sharing the uh, the table with me are liberal. But this but this week of all weeks, with so much going on in the world, uh, uh, it's not a political show today. I felt like I would give you all a break from politics, a kind of a well earned, well worn break from a very weary subject. And uh, and share some of my my own personal passion with you guys that has nothing to do with the law or poking fun <laughs> at Dr. Pat Proch. Anyway, moving on to my other guest here, um, and my and the third guest is patiently waiting on the phone. Uh, Brian, you I met you a few years ago at uh, the Deacons Day event, which is yep. this great live music event in uh, downtown Des Moines that helps raise money for Habitat for Humanity. You're in a band. Uh, I think you're performing in your band at that point, the Grape Ape Trust. It, it was a. It was actually a a, a, a duo subset of, of yeah, the Grape yeah, Ape Trust. Yeah. Uh, the 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 drummer and I, who actually at that time was playing guitar, we were just both both playing guitars for that for that event. Um, but he and I are both songwriters and and guitar players, and we do we actually do a duo as as TMI. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh it's you know something something for the young kids and we do appreciate that though we do appreciate that now i i want to i want to point out i don't know if you saw it on the the uh the telestrator there but our fabulous engineer was able to get for you your your uh your particular uh background and so we do appreciate <laughs> that but uh so cool. kind of tell me where where are your uh so your favorite places to play around des moines and, and are you from des moines originally uh, I'm from Nevada originally. Okay. Um, so around Des Moines, but uh, originally, you know, Nevada Ames uh, corridor. Uh, but I you know, and lived in California for a few years, and I've been back in Des Moines since '93. So. Okay. And have you been? I mean, obviously, like the like everyone here, you've been playing your entire life, and yeah. and pretty much. <laughs> and and uh, what is it about Des Moines um, that brought you back? Um, a job. Uh, I That's a good was. Uh, I worked for uh, Triad Productions for several years, mm -hmm. and uh, um, doing their uh, their show control, which was uh, animatronics and that sort of thing. All over, I ended up traveling all over the place to do it. Um, but uh, when that kind of went a little south in in two thousand one, uh, because nobody was traveling to anything. Um, and that's true. That's what we were in the business of building was places to go. Uh, so I kind of looked around. I actually, uh, for the last 10 years, have been working for Iowa Legal Aid. Oh, well, that's that's a great organization. I did not <laughs> know is. that. That's a it great is. organization. And I send uh, I send folks your way all, um, uh, a lot and uh, work with a couple of their uh, their folks while I was in law school. But um, and so last question, and I'll let you get on with your uh, your performance. What is it about? the acoustic version of the guitar that kind of speaks to you? Uh, you it's know, a really bad uh, question, but I hope you can do something with it. It's, it's tough. Uh, you know, I, I, I play both. Uh, number one, the acoustic is one of those things that you can play anywhere for anybody, anytime. And you don't have to take along a huge, kit of stuff to play it that, um that's and, and that's one of the reasons why it, it's ideally suited for songwriting because yeah. you can just go off in a corner and use an acoustic and that's why a lot of my songs end up getting written for acoustic because 
it's there. <laughs> that that makes perfect sense. So we're going to take another quick one minute break. Brian's going to come back with uh, the song that he's chosen for this evening. I'll let him introduce it in the same way that uh, that Bradley did. And we will uh, get to our mystery caller who is waiting very patiently on the line. Um, but anyway, this is uh, Lefty, Doc and Lefty, Webcast One Live. Do not go anywhere. We've got more great music and a dis- uh, an artist discussion that should be enlightening, horrifying, and fun all at the same time. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be right back. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. It's like they want to get hit. Need a body shop? Welcome back to Doc and Lefty. Uh, we're here sitting with my good friends Brian Baker and Brad Seidenfeld. And Brian, Brad's already played. Brian's going to play a song of his that he's going to tell you a little bit about and then get started. Brian, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, it's pretty simple. It's uh, it's it's I, I, my latest collection. I, I have I have uh, a few albums out uh, as a, as a solo, and uh, the latest one is called Yeah, I'm a Geek. This is part of definitely part of that collection. Uh, you know, most of the songs are about you know kind of geeky subjects like monsters of some various sort, uh, second life, that sort of thing. Uh, this one happens to be about a werewolf. So. And what's it called? Why did it have to be the moon? Why did it have to be the moon? Brian Baker. Why did it have to be the moon? Why does the full one always come too soon? Once I had love. Can be 
become a wolf when the moon is full and bright. Why did it have to be the moon? Oh. <laughs> All right. I just knocked over Brad's camera. All right. Thanks, Brian. That was uh why did it have to be the moon? I gotta I gotta tell you, um I'm a I, I first of all I really enjoyed that that song for sure. But I gotta ask you, you know, themes like uh, werewolves, monsters, stuff like that is sort of in throughout history, you think of like Monster Mash and some of some of those uh, pop songs of the fifties have been more like novelty songs. Right. But you're the really dramatic kind of open chords sort of just <laughs> it was a, it was a really cool juxtaposition that frankly I wasn't particularly ready for. And I'm just wondering like is that was that intentional? Was that something like that you just sort of did or or uh, just kind of happened that way? Um a bit, uh, you know, the the way that that song came together was I I actually uh, was trying to write something. Uh, I, I, let me take a step a, a slight step backwards. I uh, I am actually one of the the heads of of uh, the music department for Demicon, which is a an annual um, science fiction convention here in Des Moines. Yeah, um, sure. And uh, one. Uh, Two years ago, the theme was like dragons, and I was trying to come up with something for as a song for that um, event. And I was playing around with that riff, mm -hmm. and it just never went any place because I couldn't figure out how to how to fit lyrics in with it. Because I, I went, this is a this is a cool riff. I like this. I I got to do something with it, and I just stuck it in my pocket for a while. Um, about eight months later or so in October, I was at a, a filk convention, which is, is I, I won't even get into that right now, but it's, it's kind of music centered around that community. Sure. Um, and I was trying to think of something for the next one, which happened to be the moon that, that, that was the, the, the theme for, um, this, this past one, uh, that, that happened in May and, it occurred to me that it might be interesting to write a song from the perspective of uh, a werewolf who's, you know, racked by guilt. <laughs> you know, the, the, the scenes in like um, American Werewolf where David Naughton is just like tearing his hair out. Oh, yeah, for sure. About the fact that he's about to turn into a monster that's going to go kill people. It it, it it occurs to me that werewolves <laughs> would have a lot more of a conscience than other creatures of the night. But anyway, yeah. um, it looks like you have a a, a CD there. Yeah. Um, is that so? I'm a geek, or it's yeah. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm. A it's geek. A, yeah, I'm a geek. Okay, so yeah, go. I'm a geek. Brian Baker, where can we purchase that CD? Um, locally, uh, ZZZ okay. has it. Um, it's also uh, if you go to uh, kaklik com, that's k a dash k l i c k. Um, dot com. Uh, you can uh, you can get it through the the, the music page there. Fantastic. Um, now I uh, no that's good. So if iTunes. you enjoyed that song and many others like it, go to any of those places that Brian just uh, told you and pick up. Yeah, I'm a geek. We're uh, going to take another quick one minute break. Come back with our special guest who's still waiting patiently. I like making him wait because there are many times that he made me wait throughout our <laughs> throughout um, um, our uh, brief history together so uh, uh tune back in for that it's gonna be really really good it's a guy that if you're friends uh friends with me or or um I, I you know any of these guys here at the table you know this guy you love this guy and you miss this guy so for doc and lefty i am lefty webcast one live we'll be back in just a minute thank you very much for listening from the remax real estate concept studios this is webcast one live if Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, 
Everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. All right. Welcome back to Doc and Lefty here on Webcast One Live. I'm sitting here with two of my good friends, uh, Brad Seidenfeld and Brian Baker, who just performed a couple of their own original songs for you. Um, and I really enjoyed it, so I hope that you guys did. We don't have the uh, the number up tonight because, frankly, they're just not, there's too much music and not enough time for all of your phone calls. But if you go on the uh, the Facebook, the Doc and Lefty Facebook page, you can ta- uh, tell Doc and I both about, first of all, what a great job I did. And second of all, what a great <laughs> job my two uh, musician friends did and how um, great uh, it was to listen to a little bit of Des Moines' own talented live musicians here on the internet radio station. Anyway, finally, as promised, a really good friend of mine, this guy and I actually used to be in a band together um, before he hightailed it to the warmer climes of Florida. He's been sitting on hold this entire time, and I know that he's been itching and raring to go. He's got a new CD of his own to plug that he just got done a few months ago, and I'll let you tell, I'll let uh, him tell you all about it. But anyway, here we are with Sean Bright calling in from his home in sunny Fort Myers, Florida. Sean, you are on the air. It is beautifully warm down here. Is it, is it beautifully warm down there? Like, how it beautiful is, is it? Yeah, it was uh, mid eighties today. Mid Ugh. mid eighties today. I think that he he looked at the weather report up here in Iowa before he called in. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So how are you doing, buddy? I'm good. I am great. How are you guys doing? We're not too bad. We uh um we're anxious to hear what you've you've got to say. I know that you've got the the uh, the new album is out, and yep. and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get caught. In one of those pandering lies, um, Sean asked me today if I'd uh, gotten a copy of it. And I didn't. I don't know how. If did you send a, a, a bunch of copies up here that I just didn't see? I know that I've listened to a few of the songs though. Uh, it, it was probably one of those things where I said, "Hey, I've got a copy for you." When I was uh, in town uh, this last September, and it was probably one of those uh, one of those things where I said, "Hey, I got a copy for you, Blake. I'll have to get it to you before I go back." And of course, then I got back to Fort Myers and realized that I still had it in my duffel bag. He he takes all responsibility. Yeah, no, that's exactly what happened. I have no idea <laughs> why you would do something like that. But anyway, tell tell um, the listeners a little bit about your album. Um, basically, it's uh, you know it had been a while since I had done a full uh, full band album. Uh, I think uh, the last one was uh, two thousand uh, two thousand seven two thousand eight, right around there, and. And I decided that uh, I wanted the full band album to be uh, just me, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound doesn't sound selfish. Um, so I thought uh, I thought what I'd do is I'd, I'd go into a studio and uh, see if I had any uh, any percussion chops, uh, any piano chops, anything like that. And and so I kind of kind of wrote these songs um, on the guitar. There's uh, eleven songs and kind of just wrote them all on the guitar and then uh, went to the studio and. Um, Kind of built him up from there, so did uh, did some harmonies, did some uh, some drumming, and um, a little bit of bass playing, I guess. So, uh, but it's uh, what you hear uh, in uh, in one of the songs. I think that uh, that they're going to play there. One of the one of the songs is uh, it's, it's all me. So there's there's a little uh, little horn section going on. I actually had my my brother. Uh, he plays trumpet. I had him come in and and do a little do a little lick on that. So, uh, um, but that's, that's pretty much just the album. It's, uh, it's a, a lot of the songs are, uh, reminiscent, um, about my wonderful days and friends in, in Iowa. And that's the, that's one of the songs that you'll, uh, uh you'll be hearing here in a, in a couple seconds. So. Fantastic. Now I know, and most everybody who knows you kind of knows where, where you came up musically speaking, um, has, and that was with uh, with the Dave Matthews band, and I'll just you know come right out and say it. But has any of that been reaffirmed since you moved to Florida? Is is life a little bit more laid back down there? That kind of eases into that Dave role, or do you find the Midwest is a little bit more uh, kind of Dave speed, if that makes sense? Uh, to be completely honest, I don't know if this Dave Matthews you speak of, um, but <laughs> all right, <laughs> no. all right, funny guy. We're just gonna play the damn song, and uh, if you're gonna be cracking jokes like that. <laughs> no, I mean basically, basically it's uh, you know I came down here and and there aren't uh, there isn't a huge 
uh, Dave Matthews contingent down here. It's, it's, uh, you know, there's a few people that like it and there's a few people that, um, you know, are more into the, uh, Zach Brown band. Um, uh, what I, what I found is there aren't as many Jimmy Buffett fans, uh, <laughs> down here playing shows down here. If I bust into a Jimmy Buffett song, I think they're trying to take tips from my tip jar. Um, <laughs> Instead of, putting, instead of putting some in. So. Now, 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 that is nothing to take against Mr. Buffett, who's a major sponsor of this show. Exactly. But, no, that's a joke. Anyway, we're gonna we're running out of time <laughs> rapidly here, so we're going to uh, um, bust right into. Uh, I think we're gonna play the title track. Is that the one, one of the ones you sent me? The title track. Correct. It's yeah. It's yeah. On, uh, arrived. We're gonna play yep. play arrived for you here, and then we'll get right back into uh, talking to these these three ca- uh, crazy cats, and we're gonna just go right into it without a break if we can. And uh, have Ryan Q up arrived. This is Sean Bright arrived. The title track from his new CD. Hope you like it. Sean Bright, and um, you know, don't uh, don't feel too bad, guys, because he had a lot 
longer of a time to to work on on that particular tune and a lot of more instruments apparently. But Sean, that was awesome, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, you're welcome. Anyway, I'm not gonna get too uh too deep into the the song right now because we got to go to sure. another uh, uh another break. One of our um important sponsors. Um, needs to, to weigh in here. But after the break, we're going to talk a little bit about that song and then kind of open it up. i got a few questions to ask the group as a whole. And so we will uh, um, finish out the hour kind of just talking about the process, talking about playing around uh, Des Moines, Florida, wherever it happens to be. Anyway, this is uh, um, this next uh, this next message coming up is from one of our very important sponsors. This is, uh, so pay attention and uh, send them lots of money. They keep us on the air. This is Lefty, Doc and Lefty, Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I am administrative manager. I am the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> you don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It was great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed rider, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Welcome back, everybody, to uh, Doc and Lefty. I am Lefty. The Doc is out. Hopefully, the uh, Republican Party is draining his pockets. Actually, not so much because he is the uh, the number one reason why we're all here today. <laughs> that and that's not a that's no joke. But I'm sitting here with uh, my good friends Brad and Brian. I got my buddy Sean on the phone. And um, first of all, Sean, about that 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 tunnel track, I noticed uh, a couple of different. Uh, nods to some of the folks that we know up here in Iowa was I am I being a little bit too uh too um self-indulgent or was that were those actually put in there uh those uh it, yes um <laughs> no I uh this was the one song that I I knew that I couldn't be you know I wasn't going to try and beat around the bush I wanted to pretty much just say what what I felt, what was going on, uh, and especially that last verse, uh, you know, to all, uh, goes out to my, you know, my good friends from Legends, uh, played for them, uh, quite a few times, um, uh, when I was still living there. And then of course, to my main, uh, main man, uh, Mr. Blake Labinus on the harmonica there, uh, that one mm -hmm. line there. So 
it's uh, it, it, it's just a song that that you know uh, had to be it, it had to be written that way, and um, uh, didn't want to make it too uh, too vague. And that's a that's a great segue for two reasons. One, buttering up the host is always to be advised. So, folks <laughs> listening, if you ever a guest on a show like this, or for the, everybody here who's a guest today, and first of all, thank you very much for doing this once again. I know that I thanked you on private, um, but uh, no, buttering up the host is a great way to go. Number one. Number two, um, that kind of brings us into the the sort of the general discussion that I wanted to have in these last 15, um, 14 minutes with everybody is kind of to describe a little bit about your process, um, sort of what your goals in songwriting are, whether or not you have a central theme or it's song to song. I know for myself, um, just to kind of get the ball rolling, when I write a song, it's really centered about what I'm feeling in a particular moment. Um, it, even though it will take, you know, several days and sometimes several years to get a song completely done where I'm happy with it. The, the inspiration for the song came in a moment or came in a, uh, in a really particular, um, set of, uh, very specific feelings. And so just want to kick it out to, to you guys to kind of discuss, um, you know, that, that first uh, topic, like kind of where, what your process is and where, where songwriting comes from and start with Brian. Uh, it, it really depends. Uh, yeah, I, I hate to go with that, but um, you know, like all of these songs that are on, on the new album are um, collected over time. I, you know, I, I, I put together 11 songs about geeky stuff, but that's because I've been writing for years and collecting these weird songs that didn't really belong other places. I actually mm-hmm. tried to put a couple of them in, on other albums and it, it, it didn't work out as well as I liked. Um, so, you know, uh, it, it, it usually is song to song for me. Yeah. What about you, Brad? Um, I, I'm just flat out, not a good enough songwriter to decide I'm going to write about something and then, then go write a song. I'm, I, I'm extremely, critical i listen I, i'll record on my iphone um the 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 chord structure and and maybe the first verse and chorus <clears throat> uh, melodically and listen to it and if i can't remember it the next day without listening to it i just erase it right off the face of the earth you know so if it if it's not hooky enough if it's if it's too literal i just get rid of it and so i don't have a lot of output i don't sell cds um as I've got, I've come into my thirties, I've gotten older and I just play for socially, you know, and I play for a little extra money. I really have written better in my opinion. I have no intentions of selling it or anything. So it, most of my songs come from a moment or from a, a probably a strong, a deep emotion, which is why they tend to be sappier, which is why they tend to only come around when somebody like, you know, stabs a knife in my back or something like that. So for sure, that's kind of, that's a little bit what I was kind of, kind of getting at, but Sean, I, I mean, I once again, I know Sean and I were were in a in a group together for over a year, and um and sort of friends even before that. So I I personally know a lot about your process, Sean. But why don't you kind of describe a little bit, um, for the folks what you kind of take into and take out of songwriting? Well, you know, I think uh, for me a big part is I always have trouble writing. You know. Um, a melody, a vocal melody. I can't, uh, the, the guitar riff, uh, you know, whatever it may be, uh, a guitar riff here, a guitar riff there, uh, you know, put it together. Um, you know, that that's never been a real big issue. It's more along the, the vocal melody thing. And I think it, it, the way that I know that, you know, I, I, I have a song and it's, you know, done is... Uh, if, if if you can still add stuff to it, if if the song can only get better, if that makes any sense, I mean, if if, if you uh, you know if you play it one night and people love it, but then the next night you play it either you know say uh, you add a little um, another little chord to it, or you or you know you're always building it. Uh, I think that's how you know that you've written a pretty good song if you can you can do a variation on it and people still know it as that one specific song. For for sure. Now, the next thing that I really and we're like I said, we're rapidly running out of time. Um, but I wanted to kick this back because this is another something that I've really that I've noticed about all three of you guys. Um, I've seen uh, Brad uh, live a couple of times, and I've actually had the pleasure of performing a, a little bit and jamming mm-hmm. with you um, a couple of times, Brian. But humor really, like it really, um, 
uh, is sort of runs through every every song and every perform. Well, not maybe every song, but a lot of the songs that you guys write. I know that if you've ever seen uh, Brad's live show, it is hilarious. And um, uh, a lot of the times, and Brian also just. I mean. The song you played uh, tonight, even though it dealt with a you know the very serious topic of getting mauled by a werewolf, had some really humorous <laughs> elements to it. And Sean, I mean, and Sean, is, you've uh, written songs as well that have a lot of humor. And just kind of wanted you to discuss a little bit about the role that humor plays in the songs that you write. When you when you maybe enough is enough. When you maybe there's too much or not enough. You just kind of uh, discuss a little bit about that, and I'll uh, I'll let Brad start this discussion off. Well, um, I have. That that's what you know how you find your niche, and I mean being funny or timing has become my niche. You know, like I react with audience as well. Um, I don't incorporate a lot of it into my songwriting, which is why there's not a whole lot of crossover between my solo shows that I you know that I play around town and and my songwriting. Um, it, the songwriting is more of a personal thing for me. Um, I think that I think that humor is probably more powerful in some ways than, than music is, you know? So when you can make somebody laugh, when you're, when you're, when you're out entertaining people, you have to remember that. Um, and I don't, I, unfortunately, like I said before, I, I don't find a lot of that crossing over into my songwriting because it comes from such a personal place and it only springs up when it needs to as kind of a therapy type deal. Sure. Um, but I wish, I wish it would, you know, well, like, well, talk, well, then maybe a little bit of the performance aspect of it, then the performative aspect of humor. And if, and ha- as it relates to sort of just, just playing the guitar or singing or whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, anytime you can incorporate the two together, I, I think that you, you can, you know, impersonate somebody with music and it's even funnier than it, when you impersonate somebody just without music, you know, like, um, anytime you, you add that. And then, um, for me, like when I'm playing live, th- there's uh, th- there's the great part of you get to be funny in the middle of a song, but then you can finish the song and it stands on its own, you know. So you don't right. you don't feel pressured to be funny 100 percent of the time, which <laughs> leaves room to breathe. And like I said, um, you know, you know, is all built into that whole timing thing with with humor. So I don't think I really answered that very well, but no, that's okay. Humor, that's okay. Humor being good. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> good. Sean, Sean, really quick. <laughs> Uh, you know, I think uh, humor is is fantastic, especially during live shows. You can, uh, if you can make that audience, that crowd for that one night, uh, kind of, uh, you know, invite them into your own head, and then you play your music for them, you know, and and show that there's still a little humor in there. I think that that's the greatest thing. Fantastic, Brian. Yeah, I, I, humor's always been a a very big part of of what I've been about. Um, you know, bare naked ladies are a oh. big influence, yeah. um, and yeah. there's a reason that they're that they're still bringing in pretty good crowds, even even after losing Stephen Page. For sure, is they even though their songs are not necessarily all funny, they have this great kind of chemistry and sense of humor. Um, their live show is hilarious. Yeah, and. Yeah, humor is a big thing. <laughs> it's just, and it's one of those. It's one of those things that that you'd like. I don't know. I don't know about about you guys, but it's just if the the making someone else making someone else laugh is so much harder. And the 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 thing that I always struggle with is that I crack myself up constantly. I do. That doesn't mean that I'm particularly funny or clever. I just you're Andy Kaufman. I, yeah, exactly. I just I'm very amused by the antics that I do. And so if I write a song. Um, where I'm feeling particularly snarky about something and it comes through in the in the song, it cracks me up. But I have noticed, uh, you know, sort of getting to your point about songwriting being more personal, I've noticed that it, a lot of the times doesn't really translate to uh, to performative setting because um, just as strong emotion or some sort of strong kind of like a, uh, sad or romantic or angry feeling can be some kind of like very personal humorous feeling can also not be off-putting necessarily, but more insul- more isolated or insular and tougher to access for uh, for folks who aren't in on the joke necessarily. But anyway, guys, yeah. thank you so much for the discussion. we got about five minutes left, and so I want to take this brief opportunity, um, as I do every week, to kind of let people know what's been go- what's going on in Des Moines, and I'll have each of the end Florida today, since we have a, a Floridian 
Um, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for the win down there, Sean. I know that you're pulling for the president in the last election. Anyway, <laughs> 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 we'll get into that maybe next week. I'll have Sean ma- making a very angry phone call from Fort Myers next week when the politics is back on the air. But I want to let everybody know that tomorrow night, once again, the weekly open jam at the Standards being hope- um, hosted by our friends. It's complicated. I know that you guys know a few mm-hmm. of those guys maybe. Yep. Um, uh, got our, our good friend Tony Bonecamp. His, his uh, New Year's Eve performance um, – uh, at the end of December, obviously, Piano Palooza is going to be just unbelievable. Um, but anyway, do you have Brad? Do you have any um, gigs coming up in uh, the near future? I'm playing Friday night at uh, the Ingersoll the Ingersoll Avenue Wellman's Pub. Or oh, whatever. right on, yeah. yeah. By I, yourself or with your band? No, yeah, at, by myself. And then I, I think cool. at eight. And then uh, the uh, the bar that um, the guys from Decoy just bought, Bombay Bicycle yeah. Club. I'm playing there with my band on the seventh Friday. Very like good. December very 7th. good. Brian, you got some stuff coming up. Um, the, the, the closest stuff that we have is it, it's, it's all clustered right around the weekend before Christmas. That is um, a terrible idea. I, yeah. It's it, your uh, family it, must hate your guts. It, well, it, it's, it, we, we have a, a corporate gig, um, mm. with the, with the band on the 20th. And then we have, uh, on the 21st, we, Every year we've, uh, for the last few years, we've been playing a uh, a uh, holiday um, last day of school thing for the uh, Smouse um, School. Sure. Um, which is uh, for the, uh, I, I'm trying to think of the politically correct term for it. Oh, but, that's, uh, o- that's the okay. Disabled we- uh, uh, school in, um, in Des Moines. Yeah, um, absolutely. Now, th- th- those probably aren't open to the public, though. So those aren't. Um, th- we're also in discussion about something that may be going on that that Saturday. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, we'll keep you posted for that, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mister Mister Bright. Now, I I know that there are a few uh, folks up in De- up here in Des Moines that would love to come down and see a Sean Bright show, if nothing else than for the weather. So why don't you let us know um, what's coming up and. Um, if we'll be able to get a copy of Arrived up here in Iowa. Uh, yeah, basically uh, I'm performing uh, every Friday night um, at the uh, Pierside Grill on uh, Fort Myers Beach. Um, and uh, from 6 to 10 o'clock uh, every Friday night. Um, as for my uh, beautiful friends in Des Moines, um, I will be back in the middle of March um, 2013 and be uh be playing some shows and uh, possibly uh, playing in the uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade. Um, but uh, uh, as for as for getting the CD, uh, there uh, there is no real uh, digital download or anything right now. Um, so as of right now, you might just have to wait till March <laughs> and then get a hold of me. <laughs> hey, well, with uh, with bated breath, my friend, with bated breath, I. Uh, um, once again, because I get to be the uh, the host of the show today, um, I don't have anything coming up uh, in the near future. I uh, don't um, play nearly as much as as maybe as I used to, mainly because I run this this uh, this show and it takes a lot of preparation and work to. No, it doesn't. That's not true. It's just, uh, you know, it's a timing <laughs> thing. But anyway, um, I want to thank my guests one more time: uh, Brad Seidenfeld, Brian Baker. Uh, Sean Bright calling in from Florida, playing a bunch of their tunes. And seriously, everybody, check these guys out because not only are they just are they friends of mine, and they were good enough to come in on short notice and really bail um, my keister out of a jam. They uh, are great and talented, as you can tell, talented musicians, and have their own sort of unique um, place in the Des Moines market and their own sort of a way of comporting themselves musically. And I couldn't be happier to account them among my friends and uh, people that I get to see on the weekends whenever I want to. So um, if it's good enough for me, I know it's good enough for you. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, my name is uh, Blake Labinus. I'm Lefty, Doc and Lefty, Webcast One Live every Tuesday night from 6 to 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you all for listening. Have a great evening, and we'll see you next week.